So I've had some time off um, from work recently because um, after I was diagnosed with breast cancer, uh, it was a bit of a roller coaster, wasn't it? It was quite quick. Yeah. And then I had uh, surgery quite quickly, a lumpectomy, and, um, and now I'm just having some treatments um, while I go back to work uh, as a kind of prevention, but it was um, it was crazy. So I was doing the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe in town at the Gillian Lynn Theatre and um, the producers there were fantastic and they gave me some time off. We went to our house in Valencia, didn't we? Sat by a mountain yeah. and tried to chill out. Yeah, tried. <laughs> tried to chill out. So uh, yeah, we're feeling feeling a lot better than we were. So my treatment's ongoing uh, for breast cancer. Uh, the, the, the surgery was um, quite difficult to recover from, uh, just because it's quite tender when you have lymph nodes removed. Um, it's kind of mobility issues at the beginning. And then the, the first round of chemotherapy was uh, pretty hardcore really. It's quite toxic and we, well, we were lucky because I got to recover in Spain, um, Ollie and Wally, he's a little doggy. Ollie and Wally were, pick, were picking me up from the airport in Valencia. Wally was driving. <laughs> uh, it was in the middle of a thunderstorm, so I just had the chemotherapy treatment, and then these guys picked me up. And that was pretty, pretty cool. Diagnosis uh, of breast cancer for me was quite quick, really. Uh, the turnaround was very quick. I'd found, I'd actually had an ultrasound, um, just as a precaution, I hadn't found any lump or there was no evidence of anything, so I was very lucky that I just went for a routine uh, ultrasound and something came up and then luckily very, I got everything done very quickly. I had the lumpectomy, how long have you diagnosed it? weeks I think, yeah. two, three weeks, so it's very, very quick. Yeah. And that was great because obviously the longer the tumour stays in your body, the longer the risk or the, the higher the risk that the cells will travel. And uh, so, yeah, and the, and the operation was quick, but um, it is incredible how I was lucky enough to find it when I did. It's made me feel very passionate about um, just reminding women of all ages because actually a lot of the women that are reaching out to me are in their 20s and 30s and so it's imperative if you can get a scan an ultrasound um, you can even have it done privately if, if you don't want to wait I think if if um, if you can afford that it's a really really good investment I actually found out when I was by myself um, I went for the scan Ollie was at home and I hadn't really told him about the scan because I didn't think there was any, any sorry, the ultrasound, I hadn't really told him anything about the ultrasound because I didn't think there was going to be anything to um, to talk about. Um, and then I think, did I wait a day? I can't remember if I told you immediately. Or did I come out of the ultrasound when they found something and then I told Ollie on my way to work. Um, that was a surreal moment because I had to kind of know that there was something uh, that looked like breast cancer. It's interesting how people's reactions kind of get away quite quickly and then I had to go on stage. Um, and I, in fact, I did the ultrasound between shows. I did a matinee and then I had the ultrasound and kind of semi-diagnosis and then back to the second evening show, which was crazy. That whole show, I don't really remember very much. And you've got radi uh, radiotherapy. Oh yes, I've got radiotherapy as well for a period of time uh, to just try and nuke any leftover cells that are left. The cancer diagnosis definitely changes everything. It's, it's a strange journey of feeling lots of different things all at the same time. So you feel incredibly frightened at the beginning because you just suddenly value your life so much. Um, Everything and everyone just seems like incredibly beautiful and the world seems really beautiful all of a sudden. 
which is kind of quite depressing that you can only notice things sometimes when there's the threat of them being taken away. Um, then sometimes there's anger, I got angry because uh, I get frustrated at not being in control of something because that's something that I do to feel safe and so you can't you can't be in control of an illness um, so I had to learn to be a bit passive yeah accepting so that's patient. quite patient not my not my best quality patience I'm getting I'm getting much better at it because you have to I've had incredible support from family and friends it's been overwhelming I've also had loads of support from women with breast cancer who've been reaching out on social media which I was kind of a bit freaked out at the beginning whether I should share it or not. I've always had a slightly precarious relationship with social media, I haven't really used it very much before and then I found that I felt really comforted by hundreds of people that were sweet enough to share their stories and which felt quite I felt quite privileged really and a lot of the things they were saying were just incredibly moving and helpful to me. Um, Ollie's probably been the most up close and um, personal um, person that's yeah, had to help me through the kind of tricky bits. It's really, really hard watching someone go through something like this. I think um, the way we work is just try and uh, get everything out in the open, how we're feeling on a day-to-day, hour-by-hour kind of basis, and then go from there, really. I think in terms of support, um, made quite a few soups. <laughs> you did. Oh. Done, done a bit of driving. You used um, to do the turmeric and ginger shots. Turmeric and morning. ginger shots, I forgot about those. <laughs> Ollie's an amazing cook and uh, has been feeding me healthy food. Mm sometimes unhealthy food um, but that's yeah. been needed as well yeah I think I think just for both of us it's kind of trying to retain kind of normality and have things to look forward to as well yeah that's uh, true never lose lose sight of what we have where we're going to end up and just kind of pull each other through um, the, the kind of dark moments a difficult thing telling everyone about a diagnosis <clears throat> of cancer but it's, it's more complicated uh, with your children just because I like to be open and honest with them uh, that's the relationship that we have so I don't want to patronize them or keep things from them but at the same time the idea for them that they could potentially lose you know, one of their parents that's terrifying so you try to protect them from your feelings and your fears. So I just made sure that I was um, as positive as possible. And then I was hoping that that would translate to their feelings. And I think so far they've, yeah, they've been very good. It's, it's a huge bombshell for anyone, but then very quickly you adjust to the news and you, then it just becomes part of kind of normal conversation. So yeah, they've been very good, but they've been very supportive, very sweet. I think we all have an idea that breast cancer checkups should only happen kind of over 40 and so many of the women that have been contacting me have been 20s, 30s, um, but kind of all ages just regular checkups and certainly mammograms can feel overwhelming um, but if, if you can you know ultrasounds are a good way of um, detecting lumps or shadows. Um, our first interview as a couple. You've been very interested. Have I? Yeah, you have. Thanks. I've been <laughs> listening intently. <laughs> Just for a change. <laughs> yeah, for a change. Um, I haven't really talked publicly about our relationship before, um, but I think because of the cancer, we've kind of, you know, for us it was important that we kind of shared the story with everyone because um, it's important not to feel shame about a diagnosis it's important not to keep it private uh, so that everyone understands that it can happen to anyone so i think we were you know more more um accepting of kind of talking about our situation yeah i i think potentially we've, we've just 
you know, for the last few years, just kind of got on with things, haven't we? And, and, um, now it feels like there is a, a reason to speak about something. Yeah. To potentially uh, get rid of the message out, maybe. Or, yeah. How would you sum up our relationship? Oh, <laughs> don't play In one word? Oh. <laughs> I'm really scared. Um, I think uh, <laughs> vital. Um, vital. Slightly zany and joyous. Zany? Yeah, zany. Like Only zany. Just a bit, whoa. Um, Go on, uh, your three words. How would I, oh, in three words? How well, would I sum up? It, I okay, know, how would I sum up our relationship in three words? Um, gentle. Um, nurturing. And uh, impulsive. Definitely impulsive. Actually, we're friends for uh, about a year. We uh, had worked together, and I think we both we both um, yeah just had very similar interests and a uh, very similar outlook on life. I think we were both looking for the same things in terms of how we lived. Um, I wanted to make a change. I think both of us wanted to make a change in our own lives, and so that was um, it's nice to find someone that has the same the same beliefs, I suppose. And it was right at the start of the pandemic, wasn't it? So, um, yeah, we got together. We were in lockdown. We were on lockdown together for two years. Yeah. Nothing tests a relationship like a lockdown. Right in the deep end. 